This is the Sculpey Charm Bracelet Set. This kit is for four people to craft together, so grab your three besties and get creating. You get everything you need for four people to make a charm bracelet with three charms. You can give it for a gift, or if you want to keep it for yourself, you can do that too. This is the Sculpey Charm Bracelet Kit Do-It-Yourself Party for Four People. Included in the kit are the plastic rollers. You get four squeegees, three separate and one comes in the decal pack. There's these beautiful decals inside the pack, uh, bracelets, two one ounce bars of Sculpey 3, toothpick tools, four circle cutters, there are eye pins and jump rings for assembling your charms, and there's um, do-it-yourself instructions with step-by-step -step guide, and inside it shows us how to divide the clay evenly so that each person gets exactly the right amount of clay for their charms. The book is marked with cut lines so that you can cut it apart and you can share the instructions so that everyone in your party can craft together. First, let's start by dividing our clay evenly into pieces as on the little map here, the clay map, so that we make sure every person gets the right amount of clay to make all the charms. The squeegee that comes in the decal kit is just perfect for sectioning the clay. We will start with the pearl first, which is here. First cut the bar in half with the side of the squeegee. Then cut each of these pieces in half. Now we have four pieces and we need to cut each of those into thirds. If you want to, you can make little lines on top of the bar to make sure you're dividing it evenly or you can just go for it. This will give us 12 even sized pieces. Okay, set all of these aside except for two and next let's cut each of these in half which would be a 1 24th piece of the bar. Alright, there's all the pearl. Next let's do the teal pearl. It gets the exact same division. So cut the bar in half first, then cut each piece in half the other direction. Now cut each of these four pieces into three. Set 10 of those aside and the remaining two we will cut in half again, just like we did the pearl color. Alright, now our clay is all ready to go and we're ready to make charms. Let's do the urchin charm first. It starts with 1 12th uh, piece of pearl and a 1 12th piece of teal pearl. The background is the pearl clay, so get it soft and squishy in your fingers. We call this conditioning. And then we're ready to uh, make it smooth by just rolling it up into a little ball, and then you can just pancake it out here on your work surface. Then roll over it with the uh, little roller until it's about 1 8 of an inch thick. Make sure that you have enough clay um, that you're going to cut out one circle from that. Next, let's pinch off a little bit of the teal pearl and we're, we are going to make some little tiny pieces to decorate that pearl disc with. And we can use the squeegee again to cut these off. And for this project, I kind of want these to not be real symmetrical. I want uh, different sizes, so I was trying to cut them um, different sizes as I cut them off the little rope. Just sprinkle these around on the disc and then push them in to make them sort of level with the clay. And I feel like they're still getting all the same size, so I'll intentionally cut some smaller. Also, I'm trying to spread them out randomly so it looks really natural and organic, not like you don't really want a polka dot pattern because this is. We call this the urchin charm, so it's very natural looking. All right, once you have a sprinkling of little dots, we can just put the rest of that away. 
and roll over this with the roller to make the dots go perfectly flat into the background color. All right, now we're ready to cut our charm uh, size and shape, which is the circle and push your cutter all the way to the work surface. Then I like to give it a little spin to make sure the clay is completely free of the sides of the circle. And look at that perfectly uh, beautiful little, little shape you have. The decal we're going to put on the top, which gives you that urchin look, is called the urchin decal. And we just need to use the cutter again and a pencil to trace our design. So um, look at the decal. Um, don't go right in the middle because we need to share the decal with our crafting buddies, but go off to one side or a corner and you can certainly decide which part of the design you want to use and then trace on the inside of the circle a little pencil line. Now the pencil's not in the kit, but I trust that you can find a pencil easy enough. Next we cut right on the pencil line with scissors. And if I'm very careful, I can actually cut the pencil line off so that it's not part of my design. Now we need to have a little tray of water handy. And the tray of water just needs to be large enough to soak a few of these little circle decals at once. There we go. Now we have plenty of decals for everyone else in the party to make their urchin charm. Dunk that into the water and immediately the decal will curl up. But you can watch it and as it starts to flatten, then you'll know that the paper backing is releasing from the, the printed decal image on top. We're also going to need our squeegee, so when the decal's ready, we will place it on the clay and then use the squeegee to make sure it's really burnished down nicely. Just kind of messing around with it to see. It's like watching water boil. <laughs> When the decal is ready, it will slip away from the paper backing. So what I did was I grabbed the top with my thumb and the bottom with my finger and I kind of went like that and I knew that the it was ready because the, the decal, the printed decal, came right off the paper backing. Now lay this on top and this gives you just a beautiful little image that would be hard to make otherwise and then let's blot that with paper towel just a little tiny bit and then make sure it stays right where you want it and then you can squeegee it just a bit to make sure there's no air bubbles trapped now this piece is going to be set aside for now later when all of our charms are made we will add the eye pins and we will bake them all at once next let's make the chain link charm it's a little charm that has this beautiful chain link decal on the top. You need 1 12th of the pearl and then a 24th each of pearl and teal pearl. Start with the uh, pearl piece first and you'll always notice me working the clay in my fingertips. That's just to condition it and getting it ready to be worked with. And this time we will make a little patty again but make it a little bit thicker. And this is a good technique for um, starting with a thick patty and then thinning it out to make actually a bigger circle. So cut out the same circle shape, set aside your scrap, but then we have this circle that's pretty thick and if I just go around the edges and pinch them, then that actually makes my circle a little bit bigger. And it gives you the ability to make two different size of circles. That's going to be our background piece. Next, we will take the um, little pieces of pearl and teal pearl and just get those soft and then roll these into little ropes. And I'm going to show you how to marble clay. And this is just a beginning little step that a lot of polymer clay people use to mix clays together. And so what we want to do 
is keep mixing in our fingertips, but don't mix all the way because we want this one to look um, marbled and mottled and not completely mixed. So the swirls in the clay will be really pretty. So really you can stop mixing it when you feel like you like um, the look that you have of the marbling. That looks pretty nice. Uh, I'll just set this down and start pushing it out with my fingers and then roll over it with the little roller until it's about one eighth of an inch thick. Like so. Now we cut out another circle, but this time we won't pinch it so it'll be the smaller size. And we will position this little circle. Anytime you pick the clay up, it might distort just a little bit, but you can push it back with your fingertips. This one can go right on top of the pearl background. So this be this charm has more of a layered look. Next, it's time to use the decal. Use your circle to imagine a spot you know, on the decal sheet that you like for your pattern. And I'm going to go right down here and I'm cutting off toward one of the corners so that I make sure and leave plenty of decal um, for my buddies to choose from. Make a circle inside the cutter with the pencil and then just carefully cut right along, right on top of that line so that it, so the pencil line disappears. I have my basin of water ready so that as soon as I cut this, I'll just plunk it right into the water so that the backing paper can separate from the decal on top. Okay, put that right in the water. First, you'll notice it curl and then pretty soon it'll start separating. So there's plenty of decal for everyone else in the group to um, use that for their charms as well. While I'm waiting for my decal to separate, I'll just clean up a little bit. And I'm gonna wipe my squeegee off because I'm going to use that to burnish the decal down on top of the clay. So I'll make sure it's clean. I just test the decal by sliding it around between my fingers and when it's ready it will start sliding right off of that backing paper. And it gets flatter and flatter before, right before it's ready to come off. There it goes. It just slipped right away. So uh, place this on the clay background, blot with paper towel, and then you can use the squeegee to make sure there's no air bubbles between the decal and the clay. These decals bake on permanently and they give you the ability to have neat little line drawings on the surface of your clay that would be hard to achieve um, in a different way. I'm going to set all my finished pieces on an index card because it's easy to move around. And then um, when all the charms are done, we can add the eye pin um, to them and bake them all together. Let's look at a time-saving technique for cutting and soaking your decals that your whole party can benefit from. Each person can cut out their decals ahead of time and let them soak in the water. So I already have circles of the ECAT and the cabaret piece pieces cut out. Then for the kimono, we want to mark a one quarter inch section of the decal and mark a straight line. Cut that part of the decal out right down the line. And you can probably get two, two charms out of this one section. When we get to the kimono charm, you'll see that it just has a stripe down the middle and that's all we need. So mark the, mark the decal inside the circle cutter with the pencil and then trim along those lines so that you have that nice curved shape. And 
And I'm going to cut right along this side too because I think there's a little lip there on the decal that we don't need. So there's a few pieces. And one more is this filigree piece. Now I've already drawn the circle by tracing it inside this circle cutter with my pencil. And I'm cutting right along the line just like I did with the previous ones. But then when I get done with this piece, I'm going to cut the circle in half. This design only uses half of a circle. Now everyone in your party can go ahead and cut out their decal shapes and then plunk these in the water. Those can go ahead and soak and the decals separate from the backing while we work on the clay fronts. The cabaret charm starts with um, one piece of pearl and one piece of teal pearl and the, the pearl will be our background piece again. So just squish your clay up till it's soft and smooth. Roll it into a little ball and smash it flat. Then we roll over it with our little roller to make it nice and even. Then use the circle cutter to cut out the circle shape and give that a little twist so the clay doesn't stick to the edges of the cutter. Okay, next we're ready for our decal and I've had these decals pre-soaking. So I'll just pick up the cabaret one and see how quickly it slid off between my fingers because we've got those soaking already. And just go ahead and lay the decal right on the top. Then uh, blot with a paper towel and use the squeegee to make sure and burnish out any air bubbles. While that dries, we will take a little bit of the um, teal pearl and we need to section this into six little pieces to make a flower. So just roll a little rope. When I'm going to make several small pieces, I find it's easiest to visualize the size of the pieces if I roll a rope. And then I will cut up um, six using my little squeegee. Two, three, four, five, six. Let's uh, roll this into a ball. And then if I just roll the side of the ball um, on the work surface, I can turn it into a little tiny teardrop. And that looks to be a really good size for flower petals. And those will stick right on the top of the decal. So roll each one into a ball and then into a teardrop. When I make a six petaled flower, I usually start with two petals directly across from each other and then fill in the spaces in between. There's four. Now I haven't pushed them down into place yet, so that's why they're still kind of moving around there while I'm, I can bump them with my fingers. little ball, little tip, and then put that into place. Now I like the look of that, it looks nice and even, so I'll push it down and all the little petals will stick to each other and to the decal. We're just sandwiching that decal into place. And now we just need a tiny bit of this um, pearl that was actually the scrap from when we cut out the circle. Just roll a little ball and stick it right in the middle of the flower and then use your toothpick tool to make a cute little divot right in the center. Now we'll transfer that to um, rest here with our other pieces uh, that are ready to bake and then we'll bake them all together and add the eye pins at the end. Let's make the kimono charm. You need one block each of the pearl and the teal pearl. Get your pearl soft and squishy in your fingertips. I always roll a ball first. I think it just makes it for a more uniform shape. Flatten that down with your finger and then roll over it with the little roller. Make it nice and level. Next we're going to cut out our circle with the circle cutter. Push down and spin. And then remove the excess. 
Okay, now we need um, a little piece for the um, kimono to go on top of. So we just need a little bit of the teal and I'm going to roll this into a piece that will be wide enough to go across my charm. And I would start by flattening the clay with my finger first and then pick it up so that it's not real stuck to the work surface. You want to be able to move that freely. Grab that little stripe of kimono that we already put in the water and gently slide the decal from the paper backing and then put that down right here on top of your little stripe. Now we want to blot that with paper towel to remove the excess water. I'm not going to squeegee this one because it's really, really small and I don't feel like we need to squeegee it, but I am going to use my squeegee to trim the excess clay away. Now I want to be super careful when I pick this up. Make sure your decal is on top of the teal and then position this right down the middle of the pearl disc. So this one's really different with a little stripe going right through the middle. Now we just transfer this one to uh, the paper with the others to the index card. These will all be baked together and we'll add the eye pins all together at once. The filigree charm uses one piece of the teal and then one of the smaller of the pearl and another smaller of the teal pearl. The background is going to be the teal pearl. So condition this little piece, roll it into a ball, and then flatten it on your work surface. Roll over it with your little roller to get it nice and level and flat. Now cut out a circle with the circle cutter and remove the scraps. This one gets one half of the filigree de decal and these have been soaking already so they're ready to go. Just put this over half of the teal pearl disc. You'll notice they're kind of slippery and you can really move them around. You've got time to move them around if you don't get them placed perfectly on the first try. Blot off the extra water and then squeegee out any bubbles to make sure it's flat on top of the clay surface. Next we're going to mix a custom color um, to make some little de decorations on the top. You really only need ab about half of this um, tiny piece of teal because we want to mix a really, really pretty light, light, light teal color. So it's important to have a lot more of the pearl than the teal. We want this mixed color to really stand out as a different color from the background. And that's a really pretty color there. So that's good. Now we'll, we will roll a little rope and we need to make some little tiny buttons of clay that will go across the top of the charm. So you can use the squeegee to cut out little pieces. We'll need about, cut about eight of them. Now roll each one into a ball and position these half onto the teal pearl background and half onto the filigree decal. So it goes right down the middle. Remember that the decals have complete instructions on the decal pack. If you have any questions about how the decals work, you can look on the package of decals and the, com the complete instructions are there for you. Now you might get six or seven or eight of these little tiny balls across the middle and any of those numbers will be fine. I like to set them in place before I smash them down and then I just gently push them down flat and this makes them stick to the clay and to the decal. Now go along with your toothpick tool and just make a cute little hole in the center of each one 
and this just adds another cute little detail. Okay, this one's ready to add to our finished uh, charm pieces for baking and later for assembling onto the bracelet. The ECAT charm is our last one and it uses both the teal and the pearl and first cut off just a tiny little bit of each of these colors and we'll save those for later and then take these two pieces and mix them completely together into a nice light uh, light teal pearl color. One of the great things about oven baked clays is that you can completely mix them together to make your own colors, your own color palette. You can custom color things to match anything you want to wear, any color you can think of, you can make it. Alright, now roll this into a ball like we always do then smash it down into a little pancake and then roll over it with the roller. Now we have a lot more of this one because we used both of those color bricks to make the new color so it looks like a lot of clay. Cut out your circle, push all the way down and twist and then remove the scrap. Okay next uh, we'll put on the decal which has been soaking for a while so it's just slipping right off there's our ECAT decal and blot with a paper towel and then carefully run your squeegee over the top make sure there's no air bubbles trapped between the decal and the clay. Since I'm going to put clay over the top of this I'm going to make sure it's really dry. So with these pieces we have the teal pearl and the pearl and then I'm going to take just one more piece of this little mixture color all we do now is make some little tiny seed sized balls of each one. Just put those on top and then you have a little uh, ways here you can decide how you want them arranged on top of the decal and that looks nice. They'll show up really well against that black stripe there push them down so their sides touch, push in a cute little divot in the center of each one with your toothpick tool, just move my scrap clays away, then I'll pick this one up and put it on my index card which doubles as a baking sheet. Now that one picked up a little sloppy but the clay is totally malleable, you can just reshape it with your fingers quickly put it here with all the rest. It's ready for its eye pin and then to go into the oven. The instructions also show you how to finish your pieces. So before they get baked, let's take a look at how we put the eye pins in that turns them from symbol discs of clay to actual charms. So you need to use your scrap clays on the back and I'm going to show you two different ways to put um, an eye pin. What I'm doing is using the same color clay at the, at the back of the charm is and I'm this piece is going to go on un, unbent so I want to put the whole length of the um, eye pin. I want to make sure I have enough clay for that to cover it up. And then I just sandwich the eye pin between the clay and the little scrap clay that I had. And then I can use my fingers to smooth this flat to the background. Now you want to be careful because it takes a little finger pressure to make these all come together and you don't want to completely smash your um, design side of your charm. So just be careful, work slowly and gently. Now this piece has an eye pin and it's ready to be baked. Another way to put an eye pin in, which is a little bit more secure, is to bend the end of the eye pin into a little hook. So I have jewelry pliers, and these are not included in the kit, but they sure are handy. Just bend a little hook. Now you want your hook to be uh, parallel with the eye. So what I mean is don't twist the hook the opposite direction from the eye. Keep the hook and the, and the eye completely parallel to each other. Then lay this on the back of the 
charm and get another little piece of scrap clay that will cover up the hook and the eye pin on the back. And again, we're just sandwiching um, that eye pin between the two layers of clay. Now this charm happens to be completely flat on, one, on the decorative side, so it's okay to lay it down and really make that fit. But when you go to work on pieces that have a decoration of clay on the top, you're going to want to be super careful that you don't smash your, your decoration while you're attaching the eye pin. This is also a good time to make sure all your edges are really smooth and that all the pieces are exactly the shape you want them to be. When they go in the oven, they don't change shape, they don't shrink or expand. They come out just the way you put them in, so make sure you like the looks. And then these are ready to bake in your oven, following the baking instructions outlined in the instructions. Our charms are all baked. We've allowed them to cool completely, and it's time to assemble the bracelet with jump rings. There are instructions on how to attach jump rings right in the instruction booklet on page 6. I'll show you a couple different ways. One way, just using my fingers. So open the jump ring from side to side. You don't ever stretch them open. You open them from side to side. Thread one end of the jump ring through the charm and the other side around the wire in the bracelet. Then just close the jump ring with fingertip pressure. Now make sure it gets closed so that it doesn't come back open. And that's one way to set up a jump ring. The other way is with jewelry pliers. Grab the, grab the jump ring on one side with your fingers and on the other with jewelry pliers and open from side to side. Insert one end of the jump ring in through the eye loop and then that same side through the bracelet and then use pressure to close the loop. Now your bracelet is all ready to wear. Make sure you put all your charms between the spring section so that they don't move all the way around the bracelet when you're wearing it.